This is how we got her. We got her like this. Woo, look at that balancer. Bad. So built somewhere else, catastrophic failure before he ever even picked it up. And he brought it to us for a 131 ass eater. So we'll go over this guy, all because a bolt fell out of the piston jet, catastrophic damage. Look at that lower end. So let's talk about the bottom end of this soft tail. Soft tails are rigid mounted in the frame. So if you look down on the bottom of your soft tail, your motor mounts, this guy is solid into the frame. So it's solid in the frame in the front and it's gonna be solid to the frame in the rear. So there's no isolators. When there's no isolators, we gotta have the motor smooth at idle and at operating RPMs throughout the whole range. Otherwise, you get a bad vibration through your feet, You'll feel it in the chassis, you'll feel it in the handlebars. So that's why we do not de-counterbalance these motors. A soft tail has two counterbalancers in them, and when we build them, we keep both of the counterbalancers in the lower end. We just take weight out of the flywheel because we are gonna keep that extra reciprocating weight by maintaining both counterbalancers. So one of the 131 setups we do, we are using a Harley 4.130 cylinder, which is what they are putting on their 131 kits. The difference between our kit and Harley's is, is our piston is three thou over. So we run a 4.313 bore. It is our Moonshine Horsepower custom CP pistons that we design, CP Carrillo manufacturers for us. They're very nice. What we do is we take each piston to each cylinder, torque plate the cylinders, and we do the final hone to fit to each piston. So it, it's a little more precise, a little more blueprinting going on with that process. The MHP, Heads right here, done by Frankenstein. These are the smaller ones. Instead of the monster heads, these are our plus 1.5 millimeter overstock heads. They are paired to a ported 64 millimeter intake manifold that Frankenstein does. And when it's done being ported, it is a 66 millimeter intake manifold that we pair to a stock Harley Davidson 64 millimeter throttle body that's also run on a stock Harley 131. And that's what we run on the 131 ass heaters done by us. Big Screaming Eagle intake on it. That guy flows all the air that this guy can handle. It's a big filter, we're not sacrificing anything there. What air cleaners do on the dyno and what they do in the real world application are two completely different things. So this intake performs very well on the street, very well on the track. And we've talked about these exhaust pipes before. This is the Thrashing 2 in 1 anti reversion exhaust. We like it because of these anti reversion chambers. When we're on a soft tail, the exhaust is ending right before the rear axle. When the exhaust is a little shorter, you usually have the dip on the bottom. We did two things on this setup. We went with a Thrashing exhaust. It is their larger exhaust. They have two different sizes. We run the larger one on pretty much everything we build. Stage two all the way to a 135. These help with the reversion so the dip, even though it's a short pipe, you have less of a dip with this exhaust on your soft tail being short compared to some other systems on the market. Also, we run our 131 with multiple different cams. On this dyno sheet right here, you're at 151 foot-pounds of torque, 149 horsepower, and the dip we would normally get it isn't so much a dip. It just starts off a little soft and it's a straight incline until we get to kind of max torque. And that is achieved with pairing the exhaust with the MHP 588 camshaft. The 588 camshaft pulls a little earlier than the normal 550 we run, and it creates a little more torque in the mid-range. Now that we have all the horsepower the customer wanted, we need the handling and the brakes to handle the extra performance. The front end is set up with a pair of GP cartridges. Right here, check that out, Randy. Made in America, it's got the flag on it. Of course, you have the preload on both sides. The right side fork, this inner screw right here with the Allen is gonna run your rebound. And on the left side, the inner screw is gonna run your compression. Both forks are gonna do your preload together. So when you adjust your right, you also have to mirror your left fork to your right. The rear suspension on this guy, we went with a RWD remote reservoir, which is set up to your swing arm. It is an extended length shock. 
and it has compression, adjustability, and preload as well. So something that's becoming a little more common in the Harley world are radial brakes. Radial brakes are set up on pretty much every sport bike from every manufacturer out there. But now, we're converting the axial setup to radial. So radial brakes, your bolts go through your caliper straight instead of sideways. That is the difference, there's less flex. So we are running Behringer radial calipers with custom line Kraus axial to radial brackets. So on the back, they're not going from axial to radial where we have to mount them there. It just mounts on the rear axle. It's got a stay right here that holds it in place and they are mounted. On the front, the axial to radial mount bolts to the axial locations and then it's a radial mount to the side. So their spacing, depending on what rotor you're running, can determine how many spacers you're getting. There's multiple different spacer kits. We like this because it's adaptable and it is from Krauss Moto as well. So on this setup, we are running Krauss Moto hardware and spacers for both radial mounted brakes and we are running the Krauss axial to radial mounts front and rear. This guy has a set of full floating Galfer rotors on the front and it's got a Galfer full floating rotor on the rear. Nice setup, Galfer does a lot of stuff with race teams. They're a known rotor company out there and they do brake pads, extra stuff for high performance motorcycles. So we run those. Of course we have custom braided lines up front to the block here and up to the handlebars. When we do a build, we, we measure every time so we get the right length, make the line look really, really good and clean. I haven't rode it. Shane built it, he rode it. What do you think? No, it, it rides great. Um, th this is the first time I've actually ridden a soft tail with a big motor with the GP and the Behringer all in one. So this is actually really nice. Thing handles just superb, um, nice and rigid where you want it to be, but also the rear end, it, it kind of sucks up the, the power when you first hit it. So, you know, you give it a bunch of gas right off the line and, and it feels like the front end's gonna start coming up on you, but the rear end kind of sucks it up just enough to kind of, feels like it's just floating a little bit all the way through the RPM range. Uh, but it's, it's a beast, man. It's, I hope he's ready because it's gonna take off.